All right, good morning. morning. Didn't see you there. <laughs> All right, you are juror 86, is that 86. correct? Correct. Well, good morning and thank you for uh, being here. Uh, before I turn the question thing over to the attorneys, there are a couple of things I'd like to do. First of all, is to swear you in, uh, because all your answers have to be under oath. So if you could raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm, under penalty of perjury, that you'll truthfully answer all questions about your qualifications to serve as a juror? Yes. All right, thank you. Now, the second thing is, I am wearing a mask. Plexiglass between us, plexiglass in front of you, plexiglass in front of the lawyers, so you get a double layer there. The point being, uh, there are sufficient precautions in place that if you would like to take off your mask to be more clearly heard or just because for comfort's sake, feel free to do so. Uh, but it's pretty much up to you. If you want to keep it on, that's fine. Okay. Either way, uh, make sure that you are close enough to the microphone that we can hear you well. And I'll try and adjust settings as well to make sure that you don't have to feel like you're bobbing back and forth. Okay. All right. Um, first of all, you filled out a questionnaire. Thank you for doing that and getting it back to us. That provides a lot of good information for us to start with. Uh, but is was everything true on that questionnaire? Yes. All right, is there anything uh, in reflection, because it's been a few months, that you thought, oh, I should have added this, or this wasn't right what I said, uh, um, or maybe your opinions have evolved and you want to change something? Not that I can think of right now, because okay. I can't remember everything. Right, and it usually comes up in the context where the lawyers are asking you questions, okay. uh, because they'll point to specific questions and they'll probably, to remind you what your answer was, read the question and the answer for you to refresh your memory. Uh, my point is that I want you to be comfortable saying something that is different from what's in the questionnaire. Okay. Uh, because of the passage of time, it's actually more common than not that people do add things or change things or say that wasn't accurate. So just want you to feel comfortable doing that, okay? Now, you weren't supposed to read any articles and try and avoid media about this case, but I think we've it's become clear that uh, it's been a couple months. Inadvertently, you might have been exposed to some media, a headline. Maybe you're watching the news and a blurb comes up about the case and gives you a little bit of information before you can turn the channel off. Uh, anything like that happened to you? Unfortunately, yes. Okay, tell me ab about what you recall and when, um, roughly time frame on when it happened. Okay, so in my old school, you know, um, the news um, constantly on, like, you know, morning, noon, you know. And I'm going to just turn your microphone up a little bit. There we go. Yes. Um, yeah, like I said, um, in my household, you know, you know, others watch news, you know, morning, you know, afternoon, in the night. And, you know, e even though I don't actively, you know, do it, I can always overhear. And uh, my friends also, you know, will send, you know, things like that on, you know, over social media and things like that, or conversation might struck up, even though I try to avoid it, you know, it's kind of difficult to do so. so. Right. Well, um, because we told you, don't tell anybody you're a juror, so Correct. you can't exactly, oh, stop. Correct. Okay. That makes perfect sense. Uh, what information did you, do you recall from it? The most recent one was about the settlement. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you recall as far as details from either the headline or friends telling you? Um, it was the headline, and then um, people in my household talk about it too. Okay. So yeah. What is the substance of what you recall on the settlement? Um, I know the amount, and um, my my friends like they tell me you know their thoughts about it or whatnot, but you know I don't say anything. I just listen, but. Yeah, I've gotten feedback and know where they stand on it and stuff like that. So. And what, what, what did your friend say about it? Um, <laughs> that um, I, one of them said, if that's that's not enough, I think okay. I believe. And um, another said, if I can't remember clearly. If that's what it is, that's what human life costs or something like that. I don't remember, but okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, as far as that goes, uh, how do you think it'll affect you in deciding this case? Like, did it move you? You know, as far as the juror being impartial, do you think it moved you to one side or the other? Yes, somewhat. Okay, tell me about that. Um, <laughs> 
I like when the incident first happened. You know, um, I was I was constantly listening. Okay. To be honest, um, I was constantly keeping updated, and um, to say the least, I've you know analyzed and um, I've been in conversation with friends and family about it, and I'm drawn to you know one side to say the least, and um, I think that's where I still stand. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to find your uh, questionnaire here, just so I can maybe go over some specifics. But which side do you feel you were drawn to originally? Plaintiff. Okay. Uh, so, not Mr. Chauvin, but towards the state. Would you, would you agree with that? Okay. Uh, and that was before this talk of a settlement. How did that move you? You think you may have been... Uh, I think it's still pretty much the same. Okay. I would say um, greatly, like move, like drastically, but around the same. Okay, so you, you're kind of here along the spectrum towards whether you're leaning this way or leaning that way. You're yeah. somewhere there. Do you think it moved the needle a little bit towards, uh, even further towards the state and against the defendant? Yeah, just a little bit. Okay, <laughs> uh, and you know what? We appreciate that you're honest and, and uh, um hiding anything, so it's very good that you give us all this information. Because we need a juror that can be impartial, some people um, are able to be that because they don't know much about the case, they didn't follow it. Um, it's not a matter of you know, intelligence or personality, it's just some people have seen more about the case, have a, and ba on the basis of that have a firmly, well maybe a leaning one way or the other. Yeah. And further events can kind of tip them even more in that direction because other people just don't pay attention to it, so it's not a problem. So you think you, you probably have followed this pretty intensively as far as the news and everything? Yes. Okay. It, yeah, it's constantly being, even though I try not to, it's constantly there and it's difficult to avoid it. Yeah, I think uh, I've even adjusted my advice to the jurors, which is not avoid news about this case. It's like avoid the news because... It's so saturated right. with this case. Right. Yeah. Okay. I tried to, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know. We know it's all inadvertent and people are not violating the court order to avoid it because it's almost unavoidable in some ways. So, um, uh, I appreciate what uh, you've just said. I'm going to excuse you from this panel. Okay. Um, again, don't take any offense in that. Uh, it's not that you're not a fair and impartial person, it's just that this case. Uh, and the amount of exposure you've had, okay. uh, especially that settlement that you said might have pushed the needle a little bit. I'm going to excuse you from this jury. So okay. thank you for coming down. And, and most of all, thank you for your question no or your answers all. to the question. No problem at all. Okay, thank all you. Right. Thank you. Okay. Jury 86 is excused for cause. <laughs>